Good evening, my victims. It is I, Malvolia, the Queen of Screams, and you're listening to Scarifier. <laughs> All right, you psychos, it's showtime. I am the ace. I am the gov. And I'm Quinn. And you are in the house that psychos built. Welcome to the Scarifier podcast. And we got a very, very special episode today. Quinn, tell us what we're up for today. All right, guys, we have a very, very special guest coming on today. We are very, very excited here at Scarifier. You will know her from her very popular web series. Also, she's all over YouTube. She's all over Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. She's also known as Malvoya, Queen of Screams. We have Jennifer Nangle talking with us today. We had a great conversation with her. What a true contributor to the horror community in terms of an artistic value. So without further ado, our interview with Jennifer Nangle. (laughs) (laughs) All right. So, Jen, I am so glad that you were able to join us tonight. How how is your day going so far? It's going great. I slept in, been super lazy. It's been a great Sunday so far. <laughs> That's good. Have you had any caffeine today? Oh, my gosh. I'm on my first energy drink. So, yes. <laughs> good. So, wow, you're really kicking it off then. I'm impressed, man. Here we go. Here we go. <laughs> Balls to the walls. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So, um. One of the things I just want to go ahead and like dive into this. I'm so excited to be talking to you. I'm not even kidding. I'm already a huge fan. Oh, thank you. (laughs) Um, So one of the big questions that I have for you, what inspired you to do this? Like what got you started with the idea? So uh, being a horror hostess was never in the cards, was never the plan. Um, My main focus is acting, being an actress. And uh, I originally had written a treatment for a film franchise, a horror film franchise. And the uh, creator, head director of the the franchise uh, gave me a polite no, was so not interested in my idea. Um, but one of the producers was, was, was into it and said that I had something, you know, really going here and I should expand and continue on with it. So not being under the film franchise restrictions or obligations or, you know, rules. Um, I went to Son of Monster Palooza that year, the year that they were celebrating Elvira. And, um, you know, growing up, I wasn't allowed to watch Elvira. She was a little too scandalous. Um, So I was just still amazed that over like, I don't know, three decades, she was still super popular and the lines were like uber long for her. And I just was in amazement that, you know, people were still this loyal. And I thought to myself, oh my gosh, nobody's talking about horror hosts. Like, let let me, you know, use that as like a character for the film that I want to make. And, um... You know, I stand corrected to this day. I understand that there are horror hosts all over the nation and people still working it on public access and all that kind of stuff. But I just thought that it was something that nobody had talked about for years. So I was going to like have this big, huge thing and, you know, be interesting. And um, as I started to write the the film script, I kind of wanted to make her real because I was in a Blair Witch phase. And um, <laughs> right, yeah, we kind of go through that. We're like, we want us to make it real and make it like, you know. And I thought, you know, if I do like a little web series, kind of get my name out there, I can build up a fan base and already have a fan base for distribution. Um, and so when I released the photo of, of the character kind of like doing this announcement of my idea and what I was going to do, like it blew up, like nothing that I've ever done before had blown up like this. And so I was like, "Uh Oh, I got something. And, um, yeah, I mean, the goal was to only do six episodes of a web series and then just be done and then just do the feature and be done. And um, we're now on season four. She's kind of stuck around. People dig her. You know, can't say no to what what people like. So, (laughs) right. (laughs) 
Well, that's pretty cool. That's one of those things where, like, you never know when something is going to catch people's eye until that moment. And you're like, holy cow. Exactly. Exactly. Yes. Gosh. That's got a a little bit of, like, a a shock a little bit. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it was, like, it was something that I just never, ever thought of doing or wanting to do, you know? And so now that I'm doing it, it's like, oh, well, this is this whole other thing that I never, ever considered. And yet I'm still having a blast doing it. So... You know, exactly. well, what I found interesting with that story was that you said that you never grew up watching like yeah. a fire ride, but, but based on your material and the character, you gravitate to it naturally. So how were you able to kind of do that if it wasn't your back? So I, I did watch, you know, Tales from the Crypt. I was allowed to watch that and I snuck it at night watching it. Um, but, you know, <laughs> because... Um, I was writing a script. I wanted to, you know, be somewhat accurate. And so I did a ton of research and I started with Elvira, but I knew I didn't want to be like her. I didn't want that Valley girl, like kind of comedy, like upbeat. I knew I wanted to go dark and, and blood drinking and murderous killing and evil. So um, I went back to the roots, the real roots and really researched Vampira and then found out that, you know, a guru of vampires was Morticia Adams. And so I kind of took from those two characters and developed Malvolia. Good evening, darling. I've been waiting an eternity for you. web series you have you do the intro and then you have different short stories that people do are these like ideas that people like contact you and they're like hey I have this script idea and we would love for you to host it or are you finding people I, and proposing I'm, I'm finding um so basically I uh I'm also a filmmaker again was never in the cards didn't want to be a filmmaker but you know you kind of have to do what you got to do to play the characters and 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 create the scripts that you want to do. So I had noticed that, you know, I would make all these short films, they would go through the film festival circuit, and then they would just kind of die. I mean, they, they go on YouTube and they just kind of sit there. So um, right. I knew I needed content to host. And I thought, well, I'll just reach out to like some of my, you know, friends who are filmmakers, they've got short films dating back years that I could, I could host and I could do that. Plus the attention span on YouTube is like zero to none. So short films work perfectly. So basically I just, what I do now is I just kind of put a post on Facebook. I kind of hit up some Facebook groups and I'm like, Hey, if you're a filmmaker, you have a film that you want me to host and, you know, get more eyes and and attention on, you know, send it my way. And, you know, I'll consider it. I'll make the intro outro and I just slap it up on YouTube. And that's pretty much how we do it. <laughs> but that's got to be pretty cool for as far as like advertising different filmmakers and different projects, because I'm sure that they probably do the same thing for you. You know, check out 
our short film project that Malvoy is yep. going to be, you know, hosting. And that's got to open up a huge range of options and exposure for It's your pretty program. much, I scratch your back, you scratch mine. Yes. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Gotcha. What kind of ratio do you have in terms of, like, acceptance or rejections between your films? Like, do you have a, a handful that come in that you you're just like it's not for me it's not Malvoya's thing I would say thing. over the past four seasons there's maybe been like two or three that I haven't used and it's only because I haven't I wasn't able to kind of you know figure out an intro outro that would work that would keep my audience's attention um also unfortunately because it's YouTube I can't you know use nudity or a lot of swearing or vulgarity and all that kind of stuff Plus, sure. you know, I'm a woman and I'm a woman in horror. I want I want women to be portrayed, you know, strong and powerful and um, have great stories. So if it's really, really demeaning to women, I'm really not interested in that. Amen, thank you. Sister. Yes. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> Oh, we know how this episode turned out. We get it. <laughs> no wonder me and Adrian. Girl power all the way. Now it's two against two. Exactly. <laughs> well, well, Jen, if I could, um, if I could take um, us back a couple questions ago, you know, the origins um, of mm. Malvolia. Where did, where does the name mm. come from? That's a very yeah. interesting oh, name. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so it's easy as I went on to the interwebs and I searched vampire names. Um, I stumbled upon this website, which it was like vampire and werewolf names or something. I don't know how real it is or how not real it is, but I just went through the list and um, Malvolia just kind of struck out. Um, it just... It, it means it, it's an Italian vampire name, meaning ill will. And I just thought that that was, you know, Pretty perfect cool. meaning for what I was after. And so uh, I thought it would be really, really easy for everybody to pronounce. But you should you should hear some of the pronunciations that I hear about this character name. So uh, but, yeah. <laughs> I can only imagine. <laughs> what's, what's the weirdest one? Malavia. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> you know, not 10 minutes ago i was like the fuck you oh you're one of those okay no i'm just kidding i'm kidding oh, yeah, yeah, no. i i've been through your web series and you have a very wide range and wide variety of different things you have some that are a little bit on the mm-hmm. darker side and some that have almost more like mm-hmm. humor yeah to mm-hmm. them. yeah um which ones do you tend to find yourself gravitating towards or do you have like a preference for one versus mm-hmm. the other? Um, so basically season one is kind of a hot mess and I'm going to fully admit that only because it was only supposed to be six episodes and I didn't have a game plan. You know, I, I had no idea what I was doing. I just kind of threw myself into it. Um, and so that's why it's kind of all over the place. And then you see it get darker and, and more evil. And that, that's where I always wanted to take the character. So I'm, I'm more, you know, interested in being dark and mean and cruel and murderous and, and all that kind of stuff. So that's where my, my heart lays. Cause it gets a lot of aggression out as well, you know? <laughs> right. <laughs> it's exactly. Exactly. It. Yes. <laughs> So, so kind of leaning more towards almost like a crypt keeper type idea where it's not quite as the cute to humor. It's more of the. What are you talking about? The crypt keeper was really funny. Well, he was funny, but he wasn't like Elvira quirky kind. Yeah, I, 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 I try and lean more towards Morticia Adams. You know, she has a lot of dark humor, but she really has it very dry, which I am very attracted yeah. to. I think that that is a brilliant way. Um, so that's kind of what I lean towards, um, but it may relate more towards the Crypt Keeper as well, too. Yeah. I found that really interesting that uh, you envision the character to be uh, more straight, more, you know, about the scares and the dark and intensity, would that reflect in the film subjects as well? Um, yeah. Yes and no. Um, I, I would say for the ones that I host, um, I I honestly appreciate any type of filmmaker that you know makes their film. They they being making a film is not as easy as people think. You know, you start off with an idea and then you got to get it 
you know, into a script form and then you have to cast it and then you have to, you know, put it into uh, uh, filming and then, you know, you then are left with, with post and then you got to put it all together. It's a very time, con- time consuming thing. So um, any filmmaker that ever finishes a film, I applaud and I say yes. So again, like majority of the time, I always try and accept like everything um, because I just know how hard it is to do. Um, but I always am more attracted to like the darker, <laughs> meaner films. Um, but as far <laughs> as, as, as when, when I'm writing a, like a, a skit or, or we're doing one of the Halloween specials or whatever, um, I just kind of go with what, what, like, you know, with my gut, like, um, there, there may be something where I'm like, oh, I'm being super serious about this as I'm writing it. And then we'll, we'll act it out and it will sound humorous. And it's not, it might have not been done on purpose, but it actually just kind of works, you know? So, um, again, I just kind of try and, and, and go towards the dark, but sometimes that humor comes out. <laughs> it's just kind of. So sometimes fate just is like, you know what? You take a back. Yeah, oh, it's it's kind of like my personality too. Like I, I can't tell you like how many podcasts I've tried to go on as Malvolia, and then like my bubbly personality comes out, and I'm like, wait, I'm supposed to be dark and mean, and and you know, saying all this awful stuff to people, and then I'm like, yeah, I mean, it's great, you know. So um, that that comes out in the acting as well. It just I I am who I am. I can't hide it. it just kind of comes out. So yeah. <laughs> I, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to play the woman card sure. for half a yep. second. So, Jen. All right, let's do it. Me. Do you think that as a woman in horror that it is harder for us uh, to kind of break through? Yeah, I do. I do. Um, I mean, we can go real deep if you want to. Uh, <laughs> I um, All right, let's, let's do, do it. it. Come on. I... <laughs> as a female female, even just in the industry it's really difficult and then when you are a powerful strong female that's that just makes it even more difficult because a lot of people realize that they can't manipulate you they can't force you to do things you don't want to do you know and um a lot of times you know i'm talked down to um uh, I'm not appreciated for all the work and time I put into things um but mainly too it's like you know uh I was having a conversation with one of my friends the other day who's a male in the industry and he was uh one of his friends is working with this certain director that I've had kind of like a me too scenario through and Um, you know, this other guy, you know, just easy peasy goes on set. He's like, oh, he's so amazing. He's so supportive and blah, 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 blah. And and to me, I'm like, well, I was invited over to his apartment and I had to read the script at his apartment. And then I had to like stay there and we had to, you know, it's just very different, very different how women are treated as opposed to men. Plus there are a lot more male roles you know and I that's that's definitely exactly. changing now like a lot more women are coming out they're they're writing they're creating more and stuff like that but like you know sometimes I look at you know like when they put like this whole like cast list together and they list it on Facebook there's one that popped up the other day where it was like 10 men and maybe two women and I'm like, where are all the females where are the female roles like why what is going on here you know probably hiding from the army of men (laughs) it's just it's it's crazy so yes I think it's it's really difficult as a woman you know to to be in this industry yes well I I do know that it has changed because I feel like females in the horror industry it very much was almost like you were the good sweet innocent girl or you were the naked slutty type it was like one versus the other and I am seeing a rise of kind of like an Mm -hmm. in-between yeah absolutely you know what I mean where they they can be beautiful but they can also be and they and they can win in the end they can overcome whatever it is yeah yeah exactly I was just gonna say you don't have to be a virgin and or show your tits to survive exactly you don't have to be the damsel in distress yes yes exactly yeah so I mean I definitely see that there are changes um, it is a little slower than I had ever anticipated or wanted, but you know, 
it is what it is and we're getting there so that's okay slowly we will take yes (laughs) (laughs) so um the halloween season for 2020 has been all Mm. over the place yeah yeah (laughs) so does that change anything for you for like recording or anything that you usually like um to be honest with you no um you know a lot of people were like oh you know have you suffered as an actor you know being in Los Angeles and having you know production shut down and blah 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 I've always shot everything on my own you know I I wear I'm the jack of all trades I wear everything I shoot myself I do the sound I edit I write I do everything so it hasn't stopped. You know, I've shot a bunch of little segments for feature films, you know, during quarantine. Um, I shot a little uh, quarantine with the queen segment during quarantine. Um, I did a, like a little bit of a web series. I worked with other, you know, actors in quarantine. So it's been great. But as far as Malvolia, I mean, I've always shot a lot by myself. All the hosting stuff I do by myself, so that's easy. Um, What was kind of a downer for this year was that, um, you know, when you are having production with COVID restrictions, um, they're pretty hardcore now when you're on set with other actors. And, of course, it should be, you know, because this is a very serious matter. Um, So normally my Halloween specials, I always have, like, a big crew of cast of characters, you know, coming in and and acting stuff. And this time around I kind of had to write the script where it was just kind of like my character and one other character having a scene or a, a character, you know, being filmed by on their own, um, which was a challenge. Um, but at the same time, I mean, we still got it done and it still, it still tells the story. So, yeah. Exactly. Well, that's pretty awesome. I mean, yeah, I mean, indie, indie filmmaking is, is on the rise. Like, I feel like 2021, you're going to be seeing a lot of indie stuff getting the attention because a lot of the, you know, big budget uh, 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 superhero movies have been put on hold and those probably won't come out until 2022, 2023, you know, so indie film is, is going to be in the spotlight and I'm excited for it. I was, yeah, I was about to say, do you think that this is the time with what you just said, the big budget studio films being put on hold or hiatus, is this the time for independent film or internet celebrities such as yourself to, you know, storm the castle? Absolutely. Yes. It's time for us to shine. Yes. Because we're the ones that are, are still doing it and we're the ones putting out the content and people are just exactly. thirsty. They are thirsty thirsty for content you know because there's really not much going on and a lot of the big stuff that is going out really isn't that good so a lot of us that have worked on like no like I have a no budget barely any budget you know film way of life so I mean I'm making stuff on nothing so (laughs) I can do whatever I want whenever I want whenever I need to so yeah, it's time for us to, to be there. It's, it's, it's our time. Absolutely. You're going into your fourth season of your web series. Um, how do you approach a season? Like, uh, is there a certain time of year that, you know, a couple of weeks you give yourself to just write and then another section you have to filming? How does, how do you go about that process of making a web series? Well, the, the main focal point for my series has always been the Halloween special um, since season one. That's always been kind of like the big deal, the bigger one that people care about. So um, I did not originally write the first one for season one, um, but I did season two, season three, and this year I wrote, I wrote the scripts for it. So um, I usually start in August like July, August, I start kind of planning things out. I start kind of putting out feelers to be like, hey, anybody got any films they want me to host and all that kind of stuff. We, we, I start the, the talking, but usually things don't really happen until the end of August, early September. And we usually always uh, shoot the Halloween special in September. So it gives us time to have like press and stuff for October and Halloween, um, which I'm still in that like, you know, previous 2020 where all the horror bloggers are being, you know, bogged down by so many things and they need so many, like have so many reviews and they're overloaded with all these, these specials. Now people are kind of looking to write about stuff and talk about stuff. So um, yeah, so we'll see, we'll see who I can, I can grab and, and, and get a review out of, but yeah. Sounds a little aggressive, but I like your approach. 
hey, 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 we gotta, we gotta do what we gotta do to survive, you know? <laughs> Season four is coming out here fairly soon. Do you have any other upcoming projects that like you're prepping for or you're excited for? As far as Malvolia, uh, I always host the 15 second horror film challenge. Um, there are award ceremonies. So I am in the process of shooting, you know, the intro outro for that. And then I also got attached to hosting um, the horror movie awards uh, ceremony award ceremony. So um, I'm also uh, filming that. And then as far as, as like, Jennifer Nangle, the actress. I mean, the only thing that I have on board right now is I was attached to a zombie movie um, back in March called um, The Screaming Undead. And um, unfortunately, like we were supposed to shoot it March 31st and, you know, everything went down around St. Patrick's Day. So that's been kind of pushed off. So I'm just waiting for that for um, like tentatively, we, we might be shooting that in November. Um, and then I also am attached to uh, a feature where I'm one of the leads and it's called Callback, but that's been pushed till next year as well, too. A lot of financing and a lot of things are just kind of, you know, up in the air as far as COVID and safety and, and flying to places and all that kind of stuff. But I, uh, now that I'm, now that I'm thinking about it, I, um, went to, I went to Mississippi, uh, a couple weeks ago to shoot with the After Hours Cinema uh, crew. They're, they're a horror uh, host in Pascalula, Mississippi. And um, I went out there and I shot like a six segment uh, series for them called Gothic Horrors that I host. So that'll be coming out within the next couple months as well, too. As Melvolia. I did that as Melvolia. So yeah. Good Lord. Well, when you are busy, <laughs> how on earth do you find time to breathe? Like- well, I'm processing all this that you're telling me in my head. And I'm like, my eyes get crossed. How does she do this? I, uh, well, I have been unemployed since July. So, um, oh, cause okay. I, I do work. I, yeah. Same yeah. 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 I know everybody's kind of feeling that too. I mean, usually I, I have a part-time job as well. So, uh, so usually I'm like juggling so much now that I'm not like working, it's kind of like, well, what can I fill the time with? Like, what can I do? So I'm also trying to write, get, get finished a a feature film script that I'm, I want to kind of put into production like November, December as well. So, um, you know, I'm, I, I'm hungry. I've always been hungry. I've always wanted it. I always, uh, this is the one thing that I've always ever wanted to do. I've been acting since I was 10, you know? So like, it's, it's just that, that way of life for me. If I'm not, if I'm not creating, if I'm not writing, if I'm not shooting, if I'm not in a character, if I'm not doing, I don't feel like I'm like living. I'm not, I don't feel like I'm alive, you know? So I, um, I'll be honest with you. I am pretty tired right now, but I'm still really hungry and I still (laughs) want it. So (laughs) you just got to do it. (laughs) Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. I had a, like a tradition for a few years where I watched Halloween on Halloween, like the original. Um, yeah, oh, um, I'm super, super uh, Michael Myers fan, you know. Um, hey, God bless you, God. <laughs> God bless you, God. What, what, what did you think of 2018? Let's open this oh, can of words. do you really want to go there? <laughs> oh, yes, oh, yes, yes, do it, do it. Okay. <laughs> um, I was not a fan, um, only because. Uh oh, I feel like I've already, uh, you know, what? I'm scooting <laughs> over, Jen. Okay. Okay. Oh, keep, keep going. <laughs> I I'm sorry, but um, yeah, I was not a fan. I am not really into like super slapstick comedy horror. And I feel like they either should have gone one way or the other. But I mean, Halloween's always been super serious, like, you know, just terror and and just vicious and killing and, you know, so like the little comedy moments that they had just didn't work for me. And I was all about the girl power. Like, don't get me wrong, I'm all about the girl power, but I feel like the story was a little off too. And I'm a huge story person. Like if the story doesn't make sense or if I can find holes in the story, I'm just not into it. So, um, yeah, sorry. I mean, I, I, I can get behind that. Yeah. The, the comedy was, you know, certainly could be off putting if, you know, that's not, uh, what you're expecting. Yes. Mm-hmm. Um, I, 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 
The apologist, ladies <laughs> and gentlemen. Yeah, I, I know. I, I'm the guy on the show who ends up playing devil's advocate yeah, for everybody. Yeah, let's do it. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, I, you know what? I really thought it was a good. I thought they brought Michael Myers back very well. Okay. Um, uh, yeah, you know they. I, I really did. I thought they made him scary again. They did make him scary again. And I, I do think that the beginning was like, you know, with him being in the mental ward and showing all of that was very interesting and enticing and set the mood. It's just the, the Danny McBride moments of comedy. I was just kind of like, whatever. But overall, I agree. Yeah. He was scary. He was, he was, he was hunting. He was after her. He was in it. Yeah. He was in it. It's okay. You you can tell him if he's wrong. I do it all the time. Right. <laughs> I mean, I see both well, sides. I really, really do. Like, is this a movie that I'm going to pick up and watch over and over again? Hell no. I only watched it once, and it really didn't stick with me too well. So, I mean, if, if we were to t- talk about, like, certain points of the movie, I really don't remember it. It wasn't memorable for me, you know? Um, but I get it. There were a lot of people that really loved it. So, you know, to each their own. I get it. You know, we have a saying it 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 uh it wasn't made for you. <laughs> Touche. You know, on the show, right? Right, PA Kyle. Yeah. <laughs> don't drag me into your conversation. Okay? Well, you don't want to drag him up here like you did like the Friday the thirteenth and get his opinion. <laughs> well, to, to be honest, this is his first time back with us. Um, his arm is healing; you can almost fully see. And uh, we're keeping him away got from Quinn. You. Got you. My spleen is still here. Um, <laughs> uh, I think I, I still have a puncture. Oh, dang. Dang. Okay. <laughs> yeah. They uh, did test it for COVID. Um, negative, Excellent. So, yeah, yeah. Just, just <laughs> we. We should have Mavoya and Quinn gang up on Kyle. I think that would be brutal. Be- hey, hey, hey. <laughs> I'm always up for a good fight, you know. So let's, because the show's about you, let's talk about you. Sure, let's do it. <laughs> um, uh, season four, uh, what can we expect uh, out of season four? Do you want to give away any spoilers or tease anything? Of course, I do. Of course, yes. Um, so, like, 2020 hasn't been the easiest year. I'm, I'm sure we can all kind of agree in some point that it hasn't been the easiest year. And um, I had a lot of, a lot of things kind of hit me in the face as far as personal relationships, uh, work relationships, um, just stuff with the industry. I mean, just everything, everything just kind of hit me in the face, you know? And so um I, the, I, I didn't think that there was going to be a, a, a season four. I actually thought I was going to end it and just be done with it. But there is so much <laughs> that I want to talk about. And there's so much that I want to get off my chest. And I could only really figure out how to release a lot of these things through, you know, being creative. So um, there are a lot of like with the Halloween special, it's not going to be kind of like how you saw the, the past couple seasons. It's very personal. There are a lot of personal things in there. Um, there's a lot of stuff that I talk about that I feel like a lot of people can relate to. Um, it's going to be a different way of viewing, you know, seeing Melvolia. Um, and I also took like a lot of personal things as far as like the way people have spoke to me as a creator and as a filmmaker, you know, some of the reviews that people have said about me, like things that people have said about me, I, I put into like a lot of scripts. Um, so it's just kind of one of these ways of me digesting a lot of negativity and just like meanness that people have kind of thrown on me. Um, and then I also was like, you know, if I don't carry on to season five, um, I really want this season to be like, you know, hardcore. So I'm pushing a lot of limits. I'm going to places that I never really thought I would go to. Um, I'm talking about a lot of things that I didn't think I would. And then I'm also taking on like a lot of horror kind of subgenres and using those as like, you know, certain skits. So like for the Thanksgiving, I'm so psyched about the Thanksgiving one because I... I'm going to push myself as an actor as well to like go to certain places. And, um, you know, we're going to, we're going to be talking about some things 
And um, now I just feel like I'm kind of rambling because I don't want to give it all away. But like, that's pretty, that's pretty much what I'm doing. I'm just, I'm just letting a lot go and just hitting the wall and just like, you know, going for it, just running, just running. So um, we'll see, we'll see if people are accepting of it or if they're not. And frankly, at this point, I kind of don't care. You know, like I cared way too much during season three. Oh, will people like it? Oh, do people still like me? Oh, you know, now I'm just like, whatever. You know, I have I have a solid group of people that watch me all the time. I have a solid group of people that support me and really like my work. And that's really all that matters, you know, because um, before it just kind of was like, who do I need to impress? And what in crowd do I have to be? And how can I show this person that I'm cool and that I'm great to work with? And now I'm just kind of like, whatever. If you like me, awesome. If you don't piece out you know so stay true to yourself exactly exactly that that, that is so important it's a a message a lot of people don't get and figure out and it's a hard one too it's a real hard one because you know you you could be sitting here trying to impress somebody and they could be like yeah okay i'm accepting to you but i'm still not gonna work with you or i'm still not gonna use you in any of my projects and i'm like well you just said and it's like you know a lot of people don't really mean what they say or they just kind of say things to just you know, not, not have to answer it. I mean, I don't know. I was just kind of all over the place, but yeah. Yeah. It's time to just be me <laughs> to me, you know, yeah, that's, how, that's okay. That's why I scare people. Cause I shoot straight at the hip and people don't know what to do with that. And that's awesome. That's awesome because you know, they're not in their comfort zone anymore. You push them out of their comfort zone and that's when you get the real reality. You get the real exactly. truth. Yeah. And it, I'll be honest. <laughs> you enjoy it. Yes. That's probably why you like exactly. Melvin. I enjoy it too. Yes. <laughs> so um, where and when is season four premiering and where can we find it? Yeah. That? So you can actually catch up on uh, the previous three seasons on, and then season four will be there on YouTube. Uh, youtube.com backslash C backslash Malvolia, the queen of screens. Um, all of them are there. Um, and uh, season four will be releasing on October 13th. Well, Jen, thank you so very much for taking the time to talk to us. It was a blast. Yeah, thank you for having me. This was great. Yes. No problem. We'll certainly have to have you on again. Ooh, be careful what you wish for, because I'll come back. <laughs> <laughs> I want Malvolia on here. I know you say you try, but I want to see it. I, I could, I could, you know, <laughs> give it the old college try and see what we can do. But if she gets all bubbly and happy and perky, then you know it is what it is. But <laughs> 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 all right, Jen. Well, thank you so very much. We appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, thank you guys. <laughs> And there you have it, guys. Malvolia, the queen of screams. What a great conversation. That was fun. Yeah, it was really That great. was a lot of fun. Certainly a treat for us. It's going to be a treat for you guys. Um, certainly check her out on her uh, on YouTube. Follow her. Share her. Like, subscribe, comment. Um, what a fantastic talk. Definitely be on the lookout for season four. It's going to be awesome. October 13th, people. It's going to be great. Well, before we call the night, Gov, do you want to let the Psycho Nation in on anything new with Scarefire? Well, uh, Scarefire is in the process of making their own films. We've opened a film division, and we are in active production on our own set of short horror films. And hopefully you guys can be on the lookout for that come this October. I don't want to give away what it is, but, you know... It is a scream and a dream. Um, the only thing to add, you know, next time on Scarefire, we are going to have a special guest host. Not going to announce that name right now, but we are going to venture into a topic that we don't really talk about on the show. We're going to venture into the world of torture porn or Gorno. Oh, boy. Yay. So that's going to be very interesting. So look out for that. Remember to like, share, subscribe, everything to Scarefire as usual. We'll see you next time. Scarefire. <laughs> Ha, 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 ha.